question is, we gauge whether or not we get burn by looking for burn marks on the part. I was told this is a bad idea. What's the story? Whenever you're grinding metals, basically, you have to differentiate between oxidation burn and genuine thermal damage. And there's a lot of confusion around this because the only type of thermal damage you can see is oxidation burn. The other types of thermal damage, over tempering, softening of the material, residual tensile stresses, phase changes in the material, white layer, rehardening burn, those are all invisible. So you really have to be careful that you know the difference between genuine thermal damage and just oxidation burn. This is a picture of a tap. Here we had two grinding operations. We had the flute grinding operation and we had the thread grinding operation. Now we've got to be careful because we get oxidation burn which is basically just rust. We get a thin layer of iron oxide on the workpiece and this occurs at extremely low temperatures or it begins to occur at extremely low temperatures. So here we don't see any oxidation burn on the ground surface from thread grinding, but we see a little bit on the unground surface from thread grinding in the flute area. Now, where is the part burned or is it burned? That's extremely difficult to know. We probably got oxidation burn in the thread grinding operation, but then the wheel came and cleaned it up. But on the unground surface, it can't clean it up. So we have oxidation burn. Now what was the temperature of that region? It's pretty easy to figure out. It goes back to the old days when they used to look at temper colors. You can determine the temperature pretty much, pretty close, that the workpiece reached just based on the temper colors. So the light blue region that we see here reached a temperature of maybe 350 degrees C. The dark blue region, 300 C. The brown region, maybe 270 C. All things considered, these are really low temperatures compared to genuine thermal damage, which it all depends on the material, but for a lot of hardened steels, over tempering begins to occur at maybe 600 degrees C, residual tensile stresses, 700, 800 degrees C, phase changes, rehardening burn, 900, 1000 degrees C. So it's conceivable that in the thread grinding operation, the temperature got above 1100 degrees C, we have genuine thermal damage, and we can't see it because it's invisible. The temperature on the unground surface, we have a rough idea of what it reached, and we can see it only reached maybe 300 degrees C. That's below the region of genuine thermal damage, but we see the oxidation burn, the brown, yellow, and blue marks. So you have to be extremely careful of trying to gauge whether or not your workpiece had genuine thermal damage simply based on the presence of oxidation burn. I've seen a lot of grinding operations that had no oxidation burn whatsoever, but when we tested it for genuine thermal damage, they were burned to hell. I've seen a lot of operations that had brown, yellow, and blue marks, but when we tested it for genuine thermal damage, they were just fine. You can even cool the oxidizing region to get rid of that oxide and still have genuine thermal damage or you can not cool that oxidizing region and still not have genuine thermal damage. So it gets complicated and you have to be extremely careful to say, ah, oh, the workpiece is brown, it must be damaged. That may or may not be true.